The Sanborn Maps of Milwaukee are fire insurance atlases held by the American Geographical Society Library at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Sanborn Maps were designed to assist fire insurance agents with insuring property. Even though the properties they show may be long gone, the maps themselves have become an invaluable resource to historians and researchers. Produced for over 12,000 urbanized areas in the United States, Sanborn Maps have been described by the Library of Congress as the single most important record of urban growth and development in the United States during the past 100 years. The 1910 Atlas of Milwaukee includes eight volumes consisting of 830 map sheets. In their original format, the sheets are 25 inches tall by 22 and a half inches wide. Each sheet exists as an individual map item in the library's collection. The maps were digitized and uploaded to the library's digital collection in 2007, but finding a specific location still required researchers to cross-reference map sheets with a digitized map key. This process of navigating thumbnails in a digital collection does not lend itself to a truly immersive experience, where one can get a feel for what the city was like at the time, or conceptualize how one map sheet fits in with others. So in 2017, the Milwaukee County Land Information Office georeferenced the Sanborn map sheets and displayed them in a dynamic web map. While that application offered a more immersive experience with the maps, it lost the link to the library's collection. The American Geographical Society Library wanted to create a seamless set of the city's Sanborn maps that users could both interact with online and use to access a specific printed sheet in the library's collection. For our Geography 576 project, we developed a mobile-friendly web mapping application for librarians and the public to interact with the 1910 Sanborn maps of Milwaukee. Users can browse the 1910 maps as a seamless, slippy map layer, similar to the way they would browse any other Google map. Users can access the opacity slider to compare the 1910 maps with the current city landscape. For example, you can scroll to the left to hide the Sanborn map, or you can scroll to the right to show it at full opacity. As you zoom out, you get a Esri gray base map. As you zoom in, the base map switches to aerial imagery. A really neat application of the opacity slider is to allow you to compare the old data with the new data. For example, in this area, you can see this amusement park, Ravenna Park, that was there in 1910. It has since been completely demolished and replaced with a residential area. Another feature that is available in our application is the ability to search for specific places or addresses. We use the Esri Leaflet Geocoder plugin and limited it to search just within the area around Milwaukee. As you type, it auto-completes, and you can zoom to a particular location and get a marker. When you close the pop-up, the marker closes as well. A key component of our application is the ability to interact with the Sanborn maps. Users can click a point on the map to see nearby landmarks that existed near that area in 1910 and access a link to view the collection in the University of Milwaukee, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee's digital map library. The maps contain a wealth of information about the city's buildings. For example, if you zoom in, the maps show D or S or F, indicating dwelling, store, or flat. The color of the building indicates its construction material. Pink indicates brick, yellow indicates frame, brown indicates stone, etc. We wanted a way for users to be able to interact with the library's resources by digitizing information that they see on the map to contribute their own information about the historic buildings and landmarks shown. To do this, users can click a point on the map, scroll down through the pop-up, and type the historic street address Identify if the building is a dwelling, flat, store, or other. In this case, this is a school, so this is an other. Put the name of the building if it has one. Provide a link to an article or blog related to the history of this property, and optionally enter any other comments. When finished, users can click Submit, and the marker will appear on the map with a tooltip describing the information that was just entered. Users can also hover over the tooltips to see information that was entered by other users for other buildings. The application consists of three operational data layers overlaid on two Esri base maps plus another Esri base map for labeling. The main operational data layer are the 1910 Sanborn Fire Insurance maps, which we mosaiced, cached, and published as a REST service using ArcGIS server. The map service is hosted at the American Geographical Society Library and is available as an ArcGIS online REST service for use in other applications. 
The next layer are polygon boundaries of each map sheet created by the American Geographical Society Library and exported to a GeoJSON for use in our LeafCard application. This is what allows users to click on the map and get information about the map sheet. They are shown with 100% transparency so that they run completely in the background. The third layer is a user-created layer of historic buildings that are stored with latitude and longitude in a local PostGIS enabled Postgres database. To develop the front end of the application, we used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, incorporating jQuery to access and manipulate the DOM elements, as well as the leaflet and Esri leaflet mapping APIs to develop the map interaction. The CSS is responsive, so it supports desktop, tablet, and phone screens. As you collapse the map, you notice that it resizes. To develop the back end of the application, we created a local Postgres database with PostGIS. The website and database communicate via a JSP index page, a JavaScript file, and a Java, Java servlet and database class to send SQL requests to the database and return their responses back to the website. When the map first loads, the JavaScript calls the servlet to query all the historic buildings in the database and display them as points on the map. When the user clicks a point on the map and submits information to the database, the JavaScript file calls a different function in the servlet insert the information into a new record in the database and then display it back on the map with the toolkit. Our code, is, our code is hosted on GitHub. Since the database is accessible only locally for now, we also wanted to publicize our site, so we created a specific version of the site without the database connectivity and displayed that on the public at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee's website at webgist.uwm.edu slash agsl slash Sanborn. With approval from the library, we could also create a public PostGIS server and make the user contribution functionality publicly available as well. This project provides many opportunities for future development, and the possibilities of interacting with these historic maps are virtually endless. With these cached Sanborn maps as a starting point, the site could grow to include additional types of crowdsourcing applications, such as a tool for users to draw building polygons or a tool for users to contribute information about streets and addresses, with the ultimate goal of creating a historic geocoder. Another idea is that since there is a separate year, a second year of Milwaukee Sanborn maps, we could add those to the site, allowing users to access another era of Milwaukee's history. Since Sanborn maps were created for 12,000 US cities, this sort of concept could be applied to Sanborn maps in any other city or really to any other historic map, so that information buried in paper maps in library drawers become accessible to a modern audience in an internet.